Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Pop Art Hunter channel, and today we're going to be taking a look at a piece out of my collection that is part of uh, old time movie history. Look at this beauty right here. Uh, this is a piece of artwork. Uh, I'm going to show you the piece of artwork and then we'll discuss it a little bit. Uh, so you can see here, uh, it's a watercolor of The Bride of Frankenstein. I really like these like dripping marks, uh, you know, so I believe the artist probably painted it like this and they kind of have it dripping down. Uh, but yeah, this is an original uh, watercolor of the Bride of Frankenstein. Now you might be asking, who did this artwork? Uh, who who done it? Um, and to be honest, I have no idea. Uh, I know very uh, brief information. So I was at a, an art auction um, and uh, I ended up purchasing this piece. It was a charitable um, art event. And I was told that it was a girl in high school. They told me she was 16 years old, went to a local high school and did this piece. And I thought, this is really stinking good. Um, and it also fit with my movie collection. You know, Bride of Frankenstein is one of those classic movie monsters, uh, monsters of sorts. You know, I think she was the most beautiful of the monsters, not like the creature from the Black Lagoon or, you know, Wolfman or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is, it, it's such a neat looking piece. It fits that old new movie style. Uh, I actually have it in a portion of my house with uh, uh, old film reels, canister kind of stuff, and uh, you know some uh, old time movie lobby stuff, uh, magazines from the time, um, and it just fits very well with that decor. But it's a piece that you know, it, as far as value, is probably not going to be a worth a lot because this is an unknown artist, at least for now. I wouldn't know the artist's name. The signature is not as legible. I probably wouldn't even know if in a hundred years I have something. Well, I probably be dead by then in 10 years 20 years 30 years i probably won't even know if i had something that was famous because i don't even know who did it and i don't have the provenance to sort of prove it so um i just like it in my collection because i think it looks really cool um and it just goes to show you sometimes you purchase something not just for value you purchase because you like to look at it um when we talk about uh in my other videos whether or not you're doing something for investing purposes or just for nostalgia or the love of the artwork this is one of those loves i, I just i saw it had to have it outbid everybody else to get it, and it went to a good cause. Um, and I'm sure uh, for that particular student who made this in an art class or on their own time, you know, to have somebody purchase your artwork for the first time, hopefully that inspired them to keep going with it. Because again, I'll, I'll show you one more look here. It's, it's just really, it's just good. It's just really neat. I mean, I, I just love the style. Uh, and I think it's, it's a piece that I'm going to have for a long time. I don't foresee myself getting rid of it. Um, and, and I think as far as the resellability, I think somebody else is going to have the same reaction that I did. They're going to be a classic movie monster collector, or they're going to have a horror genre. Or they're going to have uh, you know, a movie theater within their house with old uh, silver screen cinema type art. And they're going to see this and they're going to fall in love with it. And I think that's going to be the point I'd be able to part with it when somebody loves it just as much as I do. Uh, I think I'd like to spread the love and share it that way. But hopefully you liked looking at this piece. I enjoy looking at it every day. Have it in my collection. I think it's really awesome. Thanks for watching the Pop Art Hunter channel, and we will see you next time. Thank you.